In this lecture, you will learn how to write the functionality to allow an existing user change their current password. I'll go over to my test editor. Right here in editprofile.php file, I have added a block of code. And here you can see this area, I have put a comment here, change password area. The first thing I have here is an H3 tag, which says password management. And then I have an horizontal line, and then I have a form. In this form, I have a div here holding the first form element. This first input element will be used to get the current password of the user. And I have given a name control here of current password. Next, I have another input control within the second div. This will be used to get the new password of the user. And I have given the name control here, new underscore password. And the third one is the input field to confirm the new password of the user. And I've just given a name here, confirm password. Next, we have the hidden input, which will allow us to send along the ID of the user that wants to update their password. And next, we have the hidden input field for the token to protect our application against cross-site request forgery. And lastly, we have the submit button here. And I have given a name of change password BTN all right, I'm just going to refresh the page on the browser so that we can see how the page looks now. So log in an existing user. This is the area for change password. So this feed will allow the user to enter their current password, while the next feed will be used to get the new password and then the last one for confirm password. All right, so what we want to do is, first of all, after we collect the input, we want to check if the current password actually matches what we have in the database. If it matches what we have in the database, then we can go ahead to actually update that record with the new password that the user is passing in. And right here in Pasha's folder, I am going to create a new file. So let's name this pass change password.php. All right, so since most of the things that we're going to be doing here are things that we already know how to do, I'm just going to grab a block of code to allow us to quickly get into this. At the very top, we have included our database connection script, and then we have also included utilities.php. We are checking if the change password button is clicked, and we are also checking if the token is sent along. So if the token is sent along, we want to validate the token to ensure that this is a valid token. All right, so if it's not a valid token, we just display this error message as we've done before. The next thing we want to do here is actually to do our validation. This we already know how to do. We are actually checking for these three feeds, current password, new password, and confirmed password. And we are also checking to ensure that the length for the password complies with the standard that we've defined previously, which is six characters minimum. And next we are checking if the form error array is empty. If the form error array is empty, that means that we are good to go. We can begin to collect the form data right here. If the form error array is not empty, we do what we've been doing previously. We just display the corresponding error messages. All right, so right here, we need to get hold of some data. First of all, we need to get the ID, and this we can get from the EDIN ID that we sent as an EDIN input. So we're going to say post. And then the next one should be for, we should get the current password. So we're going to say current password should be equal to post of current password. All right. So the next thing we are doing is actually, we're just checking as we did previously when we allowed the user to reset their password. We are checking if the value in password one feed here, let's go over again to the form, new password and confirm password. And we are naming that as password one and password two. If these two values are not the same, we are going to display an error message. So if the value we have there are the same, we are just going to process the request. So for starters, we want to first of all, check to see that the current password is actually what we have in the database. So we're going to check if the old password, which here we are referring to as the current password actually matches what we have in the database. So first thing we need to do is to create our query. 
SQL query equals select password from users where ID equals to ID that we are getting here. Next, we're going to prepare this query. So we'll create another variable statement to be equal to DB. Then we call the prepare method and then we're going to pass it SQL query. And next, we're just going to execute this. So we're going to say statement, execute, and then we pass it an array. So this is going to be ID. Then this is equal to the variable ID. Next, we're going to check if a record was found. So we're going to say if roles equals statement fetch. So if we're getting any record, it means the ID is valid. Otherwise, we are just going to destroy the section variables we call our sign out function. So basically, if we didn't get any records matching the ID that we're using in the where clause of this SQL statement, it means that this is not a valid user. So we just destroy all the session variables and the cookies. All right. So if we have a record, we then need to first of all get the current password from the database. So we're going to say password underscore from underscore DB equal to rule password all right so after retrieving the current password we're now going to check using the php password verify function to see if the current password matches the password that was entered by the user so in this case we are saying if password from the database which we have stored here matches the password that we retrieve from the form which is going to be current passwords so right here we're going to say if password verify the first parameter that we need to pass in will be the password that we just collected. This will be current password. And the next parameter will be to pass in the password from the database. So we're going to say password from DB. All right, so password verify function will return a true or a false value. So if password verify, current password and password from database, if we get a true value means that we are good to go. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to alert to the user that the password that they have entered is not correct. So we're going to say, old password is not correct, please try again. Alright, so right here, if the password matches what we have in the database, then we're just going to hash the new password. And for that, we need to create another variable. We can call this hashed password should be equal to we use the password hash function and then we pass in password one which will be the new password and then we specify the action algorithm so we can use password default so next step we need to create the sql statement to update the password in the database so we're going to say sql update should be equal to and then next we're going to say statement because db pair and then we pass in the query sql underscore update and then lastly we're just going to execute the query so we're going to say statement execute pass in an array of argument the first one will be the place order to be password and the value will be password one all right so in our query here we need to add a where clause so we say where id equals to id and then here we can now pass in a second parameter to be id equal to the id that we got and lastly we're going to see if statement row count is equal equal to one that means that the record was successfully updated in the database so what we now need to do is to display the success message here all right so we can move this in and s we can just flash a message we can say the variable result equals flash message no changes saved all right so this is all we need to do we are now ready to test this out on the browser to see if everything works as intended all right so if we actually go ahead to click this button now it has logged us out because of our guard function so we're just going to quickly log in again so if I click on this button now, I'm very sure nothing's going to happen. Uh, this is because I just remembered that in our edit profile page, we did not actually include the file here. So we're going to just copy this and then come down here and change this to pass change password. All right. So let's go over again to the browser. We refresh. If I click now, we should see that there were three errors on the form. 
if we do put in a password that is not correct and then we also fill in these ones click on change password tells us old password is not correct please try again all right so if we fill in the form now and then put different password for confirm password and new password we're also going to get that error message but if we do put in the correct password for this account and then give a new password click on change password we say is that operation successful your password was updated successfully thank you okay so let's now try to log in the user invalid password so we'll try that again invalid password so uh, something must be wrong somewhere let's take a look at the database all right so right here you can see that the password is in plain test that means we did not pass in the correct password so let's go over to a script again see here instead of password one we're supposed to pass in hashed password right now if we still attempt to log in we're not going to be able to log in because this is plain test so i'm just going to grab this password because i know what's the actual test there paste it here and then i'm going to try to do a login with that password okay so we'll go back to profile edit profile so here we enter the existing password choose a new password all right so password changed successfully i'm now going to try to log in again so log at this user login right so now we are able to log in again 